The Prime Minister faced blunt questions in Halifax today about his political future. You say that you plan to stay on despite persistently bad polling, despite the by-election loss in Toronto that your party lost for the first time in three decades because you want to continue to deliver. Isn't that what Joe Biden insisted on? Listen, we are focused on being there for Canadians. We are focused on stepping up on support and investments that are going to leave Canadians better off for the coming years. Told you it was a blunt question. Well, there has been discontent in the Liberal ranks, but Trudeau's cabinet ministers say they are standing by him. We have confidence in him as the leader of our government, as the Prime Minister of Canada, and we have confidence him, in him as our party's leader, as the guy who is going to lead us into the next election. I think um, the Prime Minister is doing a great job in making sure that he's reflecting what Canadians are saying and hearing. I'm very hopeful and optimistic about this next election with the leader we have, with the team we have. So, has Justin Trudeau done enough to quell the discord in caucus? And what options do the Liberals have to win back voters? It's time to bring in the Monday Power Panel. Former CBC Ottawa Bureau Chief Rob Russo, Lisa Raitt, is a former Conservative Cabinet Minister. And here with me, Vandana Qatar, is a former advisor to Prime Minister Trudeau. Welcome, everybody. Rob, I'm going to start with you. Uh, let's start with that first question. What is your analysis of how effectively Justin Trudeau has been able to squelch some of that frustration? Uh, I'm not sure he squelched the frustration at all. I think it's still there. Um, how has he dealt with it? I think he's done an effective job in, in one particular area. Um, the rival that a lot of people are talking about is Mark Carney. He has come right out uh, and, in effect, said, Mr. Carney, if you're interested, I want you. Uh, so Mr. Carney now is in a bit of a box. Is he going to join the, uh, the Liberal fray? Uh, or is he going to wait until there's some sort of catastrophe? There are a lot of people in the Liberal Party who are wondering whether or not he, uh, he's going to want to jump in now. Um, and I don't think he is going to until, uh, until uh, Mr. Trudeau is gone. Whether or not Mr. Trudeau is going to go, I don't think is going to become clear. And I think that answer that he and his ministers are giving about his future will hold for about three weeks. Uh, what happens in three weeks? There's going to be a, a by-election in La Salle Mao. It's another one of those uh, chateau fall for, uh, for the Liberal Party. Should they lose in La Salle Mar, uh, which is one of those sort of black sun moments, um, I think that the questions will intensify again. And that kind of a response probably won't sit well with, uh, with Liberals, uh, including some of the people around the cabinet table for Mr. Trudeau. Uh, Vandana, I mean, you were an advisor to the Prime Minister for some time. Do you think the question of whether he's staying or going is resolved right now? No, I think, um, you know, what I see is a Prime Minister who spent the summer reflecting, the summer who spent a lot of time with Canadians. I saw him in a number of Canadian festivals, like Filipino festivals, Nigerian festivals, and just connecting with Canadians. And I think he feels the confidence that he understands what Canadians are looking for and that he can deliver on what they want, which is uh, making him sure that he can set you know, the ability to have a high quality of life and, and deliver on things like affordability and housing. I think he feels confident with his cabinet and most of his caucus members as well. And I think he feels that, you know, he can do this. Um, and he has a tool and a blueprint to do this. And when I, when I think about what he's saying, I think he feels like there's a lot of runway still. I think a year is a long time in Canadian politics or in any politics, like things can change quite drastically. So I think he feels like, you know, I have a great blueprint for the country and I just have to keep fighting for it. I want to understand what you're saying when you talk about that year worth of runway. Is that more time to figure out whether whether he is going to stick around? Like, I know we keep asking mm -hmm. in public, but ultimately it's going to be a personal decision. Do, do you think he still has wiggle room, I guess, to change his mind before the next election and, and walk away? I think he does. I mean, he has run three elections. He's the leader of the party. As much as people say things, you know, on a, you know, in media or whatnot, he has earned the right to decide when he wants to leave. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you've seen from down south that, you know, you can have a short window of time and still make it work. So I think he feels that he has the tools and need to deliver for Canadians. I think that can change too. But I don't think there's a there's a there's an answer. There. I think the answer you heard today is that I'm here, I am working, and I'm going to gain your trust, and I'm going to do it by being authentic to you. Do you, just very quickly before we move to Lisa, the idea of what Rob said about LaSalle and Mard Verdun really being, um, he didn't, he said Chateau Fall, he didn't say make or break, but I'm going to say make or break. Is that a, a pivotal by-election for the Liberals? 
I don't think so. Um, I think for a lot of people, it's going to ask a lot of questions should something happen. But at the end of the day, whether he wins or loses, he's still the prime minister. And I think one thing that I factor in with by-elections is voter motivation. Mm -hmm. um, will people come out for you because they feel like there's something, there's something they have to fight for, something that they're going to risk, something they're going to lose? At the end of the day, it's going to be the same government. So I think that you know, having voters want to feel like they have to drive to come out, like especially your own base, isn't going to do much of it. So I don't think it's necessarily pivotal, but I think they're, you know, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens externally. We'll see what happens there. But I don't think that's that period is necessarily the make or break. Okay. Lisa, I promised I was going to bring you in here. Uh, Vandana raised the question of the United States. Everybody's watching what happened with Biden, what, what's happening with Kamala Harris. Uh, what do you think the implications are for Justin Trudeau? Lessons to learn, reasons to, to be, uh, you know, chewing on his fingernails a bit about this? Maybe not so much for him, Catherine, but certainly people around him wondering whether or not they can actually take a little bit of that magic dust that's happening in the United States with the bounce back in the polls for the Democrats when they do change their leader. I found Merkey's question really pointed. The prime minister, of course, is not going to say, yes, I'm so glad you asked. I'm thinking about this all the time, whether or not I can stick around. But equally, he can say no. And he didn't say no. He said, let me tell you what I'm doing for Canadians. So I find it interesting that he's just not putting it to bed. I, I wish he would, because then you guys will stop asking those questions. <laughs> but I think it's still an open question for, uh, for a lot of folks. And certainly you look to the states and go, can that work up here? Can, can that, you know, will we get a bounce in the polls if we, if we move from our current leader to somebody new and fresh and young and hopeful? Lisa, we also saw a couple of um, significant policy announcements today. We spent a lot of time on the show talking about the, the EV tariffs and also um, uh, pull back on temporary foreign workers with signs that there are more changes on immigration to come. What do you see as the significance of what we heard today? Well, I think that they've given a whole bunch of talking points for the Conservatives. And we saw Melissa Lansman out today making, I think, a very good point that the, the, the mess you're fixing is the mess that you created. Uh, they've gone to the point of actually naming ministers' names, and that is going to stick with people because it's more than just a government making a mistake. They're, they're going to try to attach it to individuals, and, and that kind of thing follows you into an election. Um, there's a difference between what's urgent and what's important, and this government seems to always have to deal with what's urgent, forgetting about what's important, and it catches up with them at the end of the day. Um, not paying attention to the impacts of changes in government policy, it does have uh, a consequence, and the consequence is the mess that is happening now with the, the catch-up that has to happen. Rob, we've seen um, reporting by my colleagues Ashley Burke and Kate McKenna talking about what some of the folks in Liberal caucus are saying might need to be done right now. Uh, should the prime minister say, you know, that some people would like to see a cabinet shuffle, some people are just looking for some kind of re refresh, uh, a show of contrition from the prime minister. What do you think Justin Trudeau can do right now to turn the tide of public opinion? Well, he shuffled three quarters of his cabinet a year ago, and that didn't do him any good. Um, so uh, I don't think that's the answer. Look, he's in government. He, he controls the levers of government. The liberals are in power. The route to salvation is to govern. Uh, we saw a little bit of that today in terms of uh, some important changes to the number of people who are going to be allowed into Canada. That deals with an issue that is top of mind for younger people in particular, under, under 35 who are deserting Mr. Trudeau and looking for affordable housing. But that's something that's going to actually not help for another 10 years or so. So he's dealing with the, the demand side in terms of reducing demand by reducing the number of newcomers. He's got to do more on the supply side of, of housing. But other than that, he needs new policy. He needs something that people will get excited about, something that will restore hope uh, in terms of uh, affordability and, and uh, um, the economy. Uh, and he's in power. He's got a year to do that. Uh, if, I, if I were uh, around the cabinet table, I'd be saying to him, what can we come up with that are going to make people feel optimistic about the future? Vontana, what do you think of that analysis? I think it's a good analysis. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, what the PM needs to do is um, what people want, um, or the poll numbers to go up if you're in cabinet. If mm -hmm. you're in cabinet and caucus, that's what they want. How you do that is you're authentic and you deliver for Canadians. And I think as much as these are really good policies, I think 
what it would be good for him to do is, you know, as I said, he has the blueprint. Take it from a 30,000 foot view. I think what I saw from down south and what I heard from Kamala Harris is a lot of things that I heard 10 years ago under um, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau when he was running. A positive message. There was a lot of talk about the middle class and a vision for what is the difference between what he does versus another party does. And I think when people see these policies bit by bit, when you're not engaged every single day, you hard, you're just hard to see like what the full picture is. And I think he has to really showcase that to Canadians. I wonder to what extent the positive message, like when we think of 2015, I mean, first of all, he has to deal with the fact that people are fatigued by a government that's been in office for years. And also, the mood of the moment is different. We feel that as a society, I think we've been through so much in the last few years. So how does positivity coexist with those feelings? I think you have to show to Canadians that there is hope and there is going to be a positive future that starts now. Um, that is a positive, not just for today, not for the issues of today, but the issues for my children, for your children, and for our grandkids. Like, what is the vision for the country? You know, and I think um, a big piece of that is just, is people are really tired of the negative. I mean, I feel it, you know, and I think people are tired of the pushback and like the pushback on DNI, the rise of hate. There's so many things coming at people um, that I think everyone's tired of the rhetoric and across all party politics, and I'm not excluding anyone from that, everyone is being hyper-partisan and negative. And I think people are just overall tired of that and they want a positive message. Okay, well, we are ending on a positive message. Thank you so much to the Monday Power Panel for your analysis today. Rob Russo, Lisa Raitt, and Vandana Qatar. I am.